Blas Fajardo Opal, February 3, 1927 to December 14, 2003, was a Filipino journalist and politician who held several high-ranking positions in the executive and legislative branches of the Philippine government, including as Senate President from 1999 to 2000, and as Secretary of Foreign Affairs from 2002 until his death. Perceived as a leftist nationalist at the onset of his career in public service, Opal was, in his final years, a vocal supporter for allowing a limited United States military presence in the Philippines, and for American initiatives in the war on terror including the 2003 U.S. invasion of Iraq. Opal's most enduring role was his 19 years as Secretary, later Minister, of Labor and Employment during the administration of President Ferdinand Marcos, when Philippine labor laws were overhauled through the enactment of the Labor Code of the Philippines that he had helped author. Early life and career Opal was born in Haganoy, Bulacan on February 3, 1927 to Felix Antonio Opal, a craftsman who repaired boats, and his wife Segundina Fajardo. He graduated valedictorian of his grade school class at the Haganoy Elementary School in 1941. Upon the invasion of the Philippines by Japan during World War II, he also had been to Haganoy Institute during his secondary schooling. The teenage Opal joined the guerrilla movement and fought under the Del Pilar Regiment and the Buenavista Regiment of the Bulacan Military Area founded by Alejo Santos. In 1948, he finished his high school studies at the Far Eastern University High School in Manila. He worked towards a degree in liberal arts at the Educational Center of Asia, formerly Quezon College, in Manila. After graduation, Opal pursued a career in journalism. He became a desk editor at the Daily Mirror and the author of its Jeepney Tales column. Still in his 20s, Opal was one of the youngest newspaper columnists of that era. Opal also established a public relations consulting firm. He soon became known for his nationalist views. He co-founded the Kilisang Makabansa National Progress Movement, an organization which frequently spoke out on issues of nationalism and social justice in the 1950s. In 1953, he joined the Magsaysay for President Movement, a volunteer group supporting the presidential campaign of Ramon Magsaysay, heading its executive planning committee and working as a speechwriter for candidates of the Nationalista Party. After Magsaysay's election, he joined the government as special assistant to the Secretary of Labor and technical assistant on labor and agrarian affairs. Secretary of Labor In 1965, Opal was appointed as Social Security Commissioner by President Ferdinand E. Marcos. In 1967, he was appointed Secretary of Labor and Employment. In 1978, the position was renamed Minister of Labor and Employment. He resigned briefly in 1971 to run an unsuccessful campaign for election to the Philippine Senate, but was reappointed to his post in 1972, retaining the position until 1986. At the time of his appointment, Opal was perceived as a leftist nationalist. His leftist credentials were enhanced when he co-founded, in 1972, the Philippine Soviet Friendship Society, as Labor Secretary Opal was instrumental in the framing of the Labor Code of the Philippines, which codified the labor laws of the country and introduced innovations such as prohibiting the termination of workers without legal cause. Opal instituted labor policies institutionalizing the technical education of workers. In 1976, Opal initiated a program for the overseas employment of Filipino workers. It was during his tenure at labor that the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration and the Overseas Workers' Welfare Administration were created. Opal obtained recognition from the International Labor Organization during his stint as labor minister. In 1975, he was elected president of the 60th International Labor Conference of the ILO, the first Filipino to hold that post. In 1983, that organization awarded Opal a gold medal of appreciation. He was a close advisor of President Marcos, though he was not later to be associated with the corruption of the Marcos government and was perceived as not corrupt. He created international headlines in December 1984 when he admitted to the press that the lupus-stricken Marcos was incapacitated to the point of being unable to take major initiatives, and that the president S. illness had placed the Philippines in a kind of interregnum. 
Marcos responded a few days later by bearing his chest to his cabinet before television cameras to dispel rumors that he was seriously ill or had undergone surgery. In 1978, Opal was elected an assemblyman of the interim Batasang Pambansa representing central Luzon, and re elected in 1984. During the 1986 presidential elections, Opal served as a political campaign manager of President Marcos, who was running against Corazon Aquino. Shortly before the outbreak of the 1986 People Power Revolution, Marcos dispatched Opal to Washington, D.C. to lobby the American government on behalf of the president. Opal was in Washington, D.C. upon the outbreak of the revolt, and was advised by U.S. Secretary of State, George P. Schultz, to call on Marcos to resign. Opal publicly reiterated his support for Marcos in the American media in such fora as on This Week with David Brinkley. 1986 Constitutional Commission member Following the success of the People Power Revolution and the installation to the presidency of Corazon Aquino, Opal was relieved of his cabinet post. Opal returned to the Philippines and immediately attempted to position himself as the leader of the political opposition against Aquino. Nonetheless in May 1986, Opal accepted an offer by President Aquino to serve in the Constitutional Commission that drafted a new Philippine constitution. In the 1987 congressional elections, Opal ran a second time for the Philippine Senate, under the banner of the nationalist-led Gran Alliance for Democracy Coalition. He was defeated in this attempt, and returned to private life, serving as chairman of the Institute for Public Policy IPP, a policy research institute. Senator of the Philippines In 1992, he ran again for the Senate under the Laban ng Demokratikong Pilipino. He was elected to a six-year term. In the Senate, Opal served as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee and on the Commission of Appointments. He became Senate President pro tempore in 1998. Opal won a re-election for the Senate in 1998, under the Laban ng Makabayang Masong Pilipino. In 1999, upon the resignation of the terminally ill Marcelo Fernan, Opal became the President of the Senate. In that capacity, he was a key proponent of the 1999 Visiting Forces Agreement between the Philippines and the United States, which allowed American forces to enter the Philippines for short-term training exercises. He yielded the Senate presidency in 2000 to Franklin Drilon. Later that year, he sat as one of the senator judges in the impeachment trial of his ally, President Joseph Estrada. He was one of the 11 votes during the trial that successfully voted to block the opening of an envelope that was believed to contain proof of the corruption charges against Estrada. Public anger over the Senate vote triggered the EDSA revolution of 2001, leading to the ouster of Estrada and the accession of Vice President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo to the presidency. Secretary of Foreign Affairs in July 2002, President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo appointed Opal, a member of the political opposition in the Senate, as Secretary of Foreign Affairs in her cabinet. The appointment was with some controversy. Weeks earlier, Arroyo's hand-picked Vice President Teofisto Guingona had resigned as Foreign Affairs Secretary after voicing disagreement with the plan of the Philippine and United States governments to allow American troops to help combat Islamic terrorist groups such as the Abu Sayyaf as part of the post-9-11 War on Terror. Opal, who had earlier been a vocal supporter of the 1999 Visiting Forces Agreement, was perceived to be more amenable to the plan. In addition, left-wing labor activists denounced the appointment of Opal, citing his Marcos-era role in promoting overseas employment of Filipino workers which, they said, had resulted in abuses inflicted on Filipino workers abroad. During his stint as Secretary of Foreign Affairs, Opal was at the forefront of the negotiations that led to the deployment of American military forces inside the Philippines, though he insisted that the American troops would not participate in combat missions. Missions. Under his watch, the American and Filipino government signed an agreement that provided immunity to each other's citizens facing charges before international tribunals such as the International Criminal Court. Opal was also a vocal supporter of the Iraq War, and pushed for the deployment of a small Filipino contingent in Iraq. He predicted in November 2003. 
Baghdad will be transformed from a symbol of brutal despotism to a new, shining symbol of human freedom. The sacrifices invested in the liberation of Iraq, to which Filipinos made a significant contribution, will be fully vindicated and cherished for all time. Death In the months prior to his death, Opal, a longtime chain smoker, had suffered from ill health and often attended international conferences in a wheelchair. On the night of December 13, 2003, Opal had difficulty breathing and lost consciousness while aboard a Japan Asia Airways flight from Bangkok to Tokyo. The flight was diverted to Chiang Kai-shek International Airport in Taoyuan County, Taiwan, now Taoyuan City, and Opal was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was initially pronounced dead on arrival, but given medical treatment nonetheless. Efforts to revive him were futile, and his death on Sunday, December 14, 2003 was announced by his family. President Arroyo mourned Opal as an architect of Philippine foreign policy in the finest tradition of enlightened and pragmatic diplomacy, while U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell hailed him as one of the pivotal figures of the late 20th century for Philippine history. More critical of Opal, Teddy Casino, Secretary General of the Leftist Coalition Bayan, called him a political chameleon, who tried to pass himself off as a nationalist but was most pro-American. Nonetheless, Casino acknowledged that Opal was a consistent, brilliant and very astute politician. Opal was eulogized in Time magazine, which recalled his erudition, his skill at political survival, and his trademark. Extraordinary baritone. The eulogy also said that at the height of the People Power Revolution, Opal in Washington, D.C. had reported to Marcos in Manila that the president's support within the Reagan administration was falling. Marcos responded by asking Opal to reach out to his contacts in the Soviet government. Opal rebuffed Marcos, and as time noted, declined to help make the Philippines a Soviet colony three years before the Berlin Wall fell. Opal is buried at the Libingen ng Mga Bayani. In 2004, President Arroyo named Opal's daughter, Susan Opal, as Under Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment. References External links Senate of the Philippines Biography of Blas Opal, Blas F. Opal Policy Center and Training Institute.